To the Valiant vs. Club, I'm your host, Timo Wunderlich. Let's get right into it with the VIC readings, the format where we look at the best of the best value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today, we have British American Tobacco PLC, ticker is BTI. Price at the point of filing is $38.56. Sense. This is not recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into anything. And let's get right into it. Description, summary. British American Tobacco, BTI, has been a value trap for the past five years, trading in a tight $32 to $45 uh, band since late 2018. At 7.8x forward earnings, BTI now trades at a valuation lower than during the worst of the Great Recession and roughly in line with its lows in March 2020. With an 8.3% dividend yield, BTI is perhaps the cheapest quality value stock we have seen in a long time. Apart from the valuation slash yield, we like the fact that it generally is non-cyclical, will benefit from a weakening dollar, and is on the cusp of improvement in earnings growth. Inflation has had little impact on the company either. BTI long-term expects earnings growth in the mid-single digits, with buyback CPS likely grows by 6 to 7% per year in line with a past decade's growth, 6.7%. Throw on the 8% plus yield and without any re-rating whatsoever, and a BTI can be a 14 to 15% IRR stock for investors. However, we think that there's a good chance that BTI is nearing an inflection point in terms of growth. In 2024-2025, growth may accelerate to perhaps the high single digits or low double digits as the company adds non-combustibles to their mix. Margins should continue to move higher as the company scales into these products. Non-combustibles are also taxed at lower rates than cigarettes. Also, uh, as we have seen with Philip Morris International PM, the company, uh, the market is m more willing to pay a premium multiple for a tobacco business with a largest percentage of non-smoking products in their portfolio. We pegged the downside in BTI at $33 to $35 from $36 today and upside to $50 to $70 plus dividends in one to three years. This is a chart. Business. Tobacco is a bit of a misunderstood industry. Heavy regulations and limited ability to advertise ensures that new entrants have almost zero shot at entering the space. Big tobacco will only get bigger. Disruption appears less and less likely to as the winners in the e-cigarette space have already been written. Jewel market share is today well below BTI's views. Bears point out that tobacco names will never trade at historical PE multiples owing to heavy government regulation and the movement towards ESG investing. But the irony is that regulation only ensures that the supply side of the industry remains tight. Moats are gigantic and EBITDA margins tend to run well over 50%. Cessation, no, cessation rates have been stable for years, decades, uh, decades, in fact, and with pricing power, the tobacco industry typically offsets volume declines in the 1% to 6% range, depending on the country, with price increases. We estimate that BTI earns over 70% gross margins on its e-cigarette products versus 50% for cigarettes. While investors today seem loath to pay a decent multiple for volume declining consumer staple, the reality is that number one, prices are quite low in the US still compared to other geographies, and number two, volume increases in smokeless products will eventually tilt the overall balance into lower volume decline. On the ESG front, research indicates already that vaping and heat not burn products are dramatically safer for users than combustibles. BTI is also a member of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Some ESG backlash could also improve the odds of institutional acceptance of tobacco names. BTI levered up to repurchase or to purchase a Re Reynold in July 2017. At closing, a BTI is approximately 4x levered on a debt EBITDA basis. For a company with between 7 to 12x, it was on the high side. Today, leverage is quite manageable at 3.2x, and the company expects that to fall uh, to 3x by year-end 2022 when, when they report. Long term, their goal is 2 to 3x leverage. But even at 3.2x currently, the company's investment rate rated BBB plus uh, slash BBB2. The dividend is probably the number one priority for most holders of BTI. They have grown the dividend at a 7% CAGR over the past decade and target a 65% payout ratio of net income, where it is today. 
FCF conversion tends to hover very close to 90 or 100%, so the risk of a cut seems quite low. Business. There's a prior VIC write-up of BTI worth reading for some background. The company IPO'd in 1998 after BAT Industries separated their tobacco unit, British American Tobacco. While BTI has made many smaller acquisitions over the years, the largest was its purchase of the 57.8% uh, stake in Reynolds American in mid-2017 for $27 billion. They paid 9.5x on an EV EBITDA basis, which seems about one turn expensive given today's multiple. Here is the current portfolio divided by management into combustibles like cigarettes and non-combustibles, which includes new categories like e cigs We got vapor, THP, modern oral, traditional oral, and combustibles. <sighs> BIT's, BTI's brands include um, Views, Vibe, Glow, Velo, Grizzly, Camel, Camel Snooze, uh, Dunhill, Kent, uh, Lucky Strike, Pall Mall, Rollmans, um, or Romans, Newport, Camel, and Natural American Spirit. The company's goal is to gradually migrate away from the traditional combustible cigarettes to vaping devices, Views, and tobacco, heat products, Glow, and nicotine releasing modern orals, Velo. Velo is a nicotine release pouch placed in your mouth but requires no spitting. By region, here's a breakdown of ad adjusted operating profits. In 2022, uh, US makes uh, yeah, US makes 5,836 pounds. Um, Asia Pacific makes 1,642. I'm assuming this is all in minutes. Um, 42, uh, AMSSA makes 1,508, and ENA makes 1,994. I don't know why Americas um, or why Western Europe is not included. No. Oh, they oh, they split it up. Okay, no, it's different. Okay, no, never mind. The US weighs in at 53% uh, of profits on a run rate basis. There's also a line above illustrating tobacco volumes, which we adjusted in 2017 to account for the Reynolds acquisition. Through 2021, the five-year organic decline in cigarette volume sits at a very manageable 1.3% per year. In 2022, BTI management expects global tobacco volumes to decline by 2%. In each of the past three years, BTI has expanded its market share in combustibles by about 20 basis points per year. And the U.S. smoking um, demand is correlated somewhat to gas prices. That is, high gas prices will lead to more volume declines. As gas prices uh, continue to moderate, U.S. volumes may also improve. New categories. Growth will come from the company's new category products, Velo, Glow, and Views. Management's goal is to get to 5 billion pounds in combined sales by 2025 in new categories. They believe annually they can grow in the 30 to 40% range, which appears more than doable given H1, uh, H1 2022 results with revenue up 45%. In 2020, uh, growth was muted as many retail stores were closed. Overall, non-combustibles today represent 10% of, to of total revenue uh, first half of 2022. Market share gains have been impressive, and growth appears to be re-accelerating after a lull from the jewel-flavored pot media scrutiny and COVID-19. BTI has suggested that, they are, that they will be about a break-even on its new category revenue in 2023, with losses today around $440 million annualized. Views is their fast-growing vapor product with 40% market share compared to 28% for jewel. Industry. The legal global tobacco industry as of 2019 was 881 billion US dollars. Vapor uh, sales were worth 20.2 billion that year and THP tobacco heated products another 15 uh, 15 billion. That is 4%. Remarkably, governments collected 200 billion in taxes on that 818 um, billion dollar figure or 25% of revenue. 90% of the world's population still smokes, but as an addictive, unhealthy product, there are roughly 2 to 3% volume declines annually. Most, if not all of this, uh, tends to be offset by get price increases. With price increases, cost cuts, and a scale and smoke-free product growth, the big three tobacco names have been able to grow EPS by about 7% per year. In the US, cigarette volume tend to decline by 4 to 6% annually, with the rest of the world down 1 to 3%.
A lot of bad news has impacted tobacco stocks over the past few years. Juul was growing in popularity among underage kids. After a few deaths, mostly linked uh, to using illegal and tainted marijuana pods in Juuls, the media wrote prolifically on the subject and created quite a stir. Flavored Juul pods were largely to blame for encouraging underage vaping. In response to this, in 2019, the legal minimum age to purchase tobacco was raised to 29 in the U.S. The FDA also banned all flavored pots except for menthol. Tobacco equities took a nosedive in this period and have simply never recovered, except for PM to some extent. The concern at BTI is that menthol ban is in California could spread to the entire U.S. That could have an outsized hit to them. However, we note that similar methyl bans in other countries have not impacted cessation rates materially from December 8th. Tedio Maraco, uh, Finance and Transformation Director. Well, look, the California flavor ban will be, if anything, an interesting experience, as I would say. Because uh, there is always the question about the menthol ban coming through in the US. What happens and with the level of exposure BAT has in the US? We always try to quote back and make analogies of what has happened in other markets in terms of Canada, in terms of Turkey, I think more recently, but also Europe. And what we have seen in all these markets is that the consumer, they smoke first and they are very loyal, loyal to their brands, not necessarily for menthol or non-menthol. So the level of retention in those markets that have been implemented, a menthol ban is still very high. And that's why we are... we. Are, we're not always in agreement towards this view of levels of exposure too high and so on and so forth. In the US, Altria has 52% market share among its tobacco brands. BTI has 35% share and ITG 7%. PM operates outside of the US. As for the impact to growth in non-combustibles, market shifts to views and glow slash velo could lead to higher margins. While difficult to quantify, below is one simple scenario taking 2022 estimates for BTI and assuming that over 5 to 10 years that one third of cigarette users switch to a non-combustible product. Above we assume one third of their sales faced 8% excise taxes and the rest at 26.5%. Just that transition alone might improve margins by 6% points and net income by 60%. We believe that governments will tax cigarettes far higher than non-combustibles given that they are far less detrimental to one's health. Projections. We didn't assume anything at all heroic in our estimates and generally stuck to street numbers. In 2022, in the first half, EPS grew 5.7% uh, at constant FX rates. Lots of analysts cover BTI and the company seems to manage expectations quite well. Adjusted EPS has outperformed guidance in every year dating back to 2014, but not by much, usually 1-3% to as this is a mature and stable business. Management has historically targeted 5% revenue growth, but that will be 2-4% to in 2022, with 2022 EPS growing mid-single digits, implying some deceleration in the back half of 2022. Management embarked on a $1 billion um, cost savings initiatives in 2019, mostly to fund building new uh, category brands. These cost savings are now are expected to reach $1.5 billion by 2022. Since 2014, EPS has grown 6.8% annually through 2021 with an average yield of just under 5%. That works out to 12% annual returns for shareholders. The stock today yields 7.7% and we target roughly 7-8% to EPS growth in 2024 to 2025. But there is a chance it is better given their new category growth. Valuation. Given the ESG-aware investing environment, we are not assuming BTI can trade back to its average historical multiples, which is 12x EBITDA and 13x earnings, PE. But 10 to 11x earnings seem quite doable for a company growing EPS by 7 to 8% and revenue in the mid single digits. Philip Morris offers the best growth metrics, with EPS expected to expand by 10 to 12% x currency impacts in 2022. With 28.6% of revenue at PM from smoke free products and no exposure in the US markets, it appears the best quality name in the industry. Uh, the best quality name in the industry. Their purchase of Swedish Match and the company's goals put their revenue in smokeless products at 50% by 2025 versus 20% at BTI.
PMI trades at 13.6x 2023 EBITDA and 17.3x 2023 earnings. Altria MO trades at 8.3x 2023 EBITDA and 8.9x 2023 earnings. It is expected to grow revenue by 1 to 4% with EPS growth in the 3 to 5% ballpark. As far as British tobacco goes, we think fair values between MO and PM, but probably closer to MO given their lack of smokeless products. Still, their higher growth suggests a better than MO multiple. We posit a 9 to 11x multiple is conservative and fair value for BTI. That would mean um, in the, to 2025 and 70% or round about 70% upside. At 10x, 2024, BTI would be worth $57.76, upside of 52%. Our very long-term forecast suggests that at just 6% EPS growth, plus dividends assumed to be flat, actually, and BTI would be a 12% IRR investment, which we deem highly likely to be at least as good as the S&P in a decade. Conclusion BTI is a solid long-term compounder with a growth perhaps on the verge of inflicting higher. In USD terms, EPS grew at a CAGR of 8.8% from 2005 to 2021 and a 6.8% CAGR from 2014 to 2021. From 1999 to today, BTI has earned investors a total of 15% per year versus the S&P up 7.3% over the same time frame. And that is despite the stock trading at record low valuations today. Our downside case is in the 30 to 30 to 33 dollar range near term, but we expect upside of 20% to over 80% in one to three years. Catalyst noise surrounding menthol bands ends, easier comps in US dollar terms in second half of 2023. Easier comps in second half of 2023 as Russia Ukraine impact dissipates dissipates. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you next.